Shabbat Shalom to all of Yisrael and those fearing Elohim. And welcome back till when, O Yisrael, was set apart Eliyahu. Uh, thank you for joining in. Uh, we are wishing you and your family uh, a wonderful Shabbat filled with peace and rest, love, encouragement, motivational words, uh, and a little bit of insight into his word. So today, my wife and I, we did do a reading. Uh, we read the book of Galatim. Uh, I'm going to share the insight that was given with me today on the Shabbat. I studied it during the week. And as I've said in a couple other prior teachings, the law that's being put down in the Basuras Hagulah is not the blessed Torah of Moshe, but it's the teachings of the Pharisees. A little leaven will leaven the whole lump. And so many people believe in the false Basuras Hagulah, and there's many false Basuras Hagulahs. One is Christianity, and the other ones are the ones that believe in Hashem without the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach. So without the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach, uh, the Elohim of Yisrael is, is unable to be attained in this current day. Now, if you're still in the first covenant made at Mount Sinai, that's why all these awful things have happened to us, because we have not kept the covenant. Now, this is the good news of the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach, that redemption has been given. And just like Moshe raised up the Nahash in the wilderness, and all that looked at it and touched it were delivered, in this way the Barinash was raised from the earth. And all who believe in the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach is the mercies and uh, the Chen Bachesed of Elohim, the loving kindness and commitment and mercy of Elohim. Okay, so today uh, it's a little bit different. I got you back on the setup that I really liked uh, from the get-go. And that's, uh, you know, I, I wanted to, to basically show you a little bit into my study. Uh, and this is, this is where Elohim commands holiness. Now, this teaching today is not about me. Uh, it's not about glorifying myself. It's about Elohim being glorified. The mighty one of Yisrael, the one that spoke from the burning bush. This is the one whom we believe in. Only him. No other. Okay. Uh, so we're, we're going to shed light on the Basuras Hagulah today. And once again, these teachings are for all of Yisrael and those fearing Elohim. So basically, anybody that will listen, both Yehudi and the Greek. Okay? So we will say a little prayer before we open it up. I'm going to be reading out of the Orthodox Jewish Bible today. Uh, that's the TS-2009. Those are really the two main ones that I, I like to... I, I do reference off the... Uh, the, the JPS Tanakh, I do go on the Chabad site. So again, I, I, I study very vividly and I, I go into a lot of different uh, versions and translations, but this is the one we're going to read today. And I like the way that Mr. Philip translated the book of Galatim, uh, and I'm going to show you some of the misconceptions and the different rabbit holes that people can go down and get lost. Okay, Elohim, mighty one of Yisrael, we thank you today for this beautiful day. Shabbat Shalom to you, Father the one that does not need rest, but created it for us. So, Father, we are in need of your rest, your rejuvenation, your restoration, your encouragement, your inspirational word that causes us to hope and believe. The mercies that you showed to Abraham, to Dawid Hamalek, to Daniel the prophet, to all the above, Father, and especially one of my favorite prophets, Eliyahu Hanabi from Tishbi. Elohim, please be with us and cause us to know and understand so that we can love one another in righteousness, and only with righteousness, not brother sinning against brother, but righteousness being lifted up and taught to all. And if one teaches, one must do. You who teach, do you teach yourself? May we know, Father, and understand, and teach us your correct teaching. We pray this in the Rabbi Melech, Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen. Okay, let me move my keyboard here. So I am going to... I'm going to be uh, looking down because, I, I again, we're going to be reading this. I'm, I'm going to kind of give you some uh, insight into what we're reading and some of the misconception. Let's get the page. Okay. Don't mind me. My nose is a little stuffy. I do have allergies. Uh, the pollen's been a little rough, but I, th I think we're kind of getting to the, hopefully, to the close of it. Good to be back with you. 
Again, I, I've been very busy. I want to talk a little bit about Yahweh's deliverance. Uh, Yahweh, again, has delivered me from my enemies. Uh, and Yahweh has afflicted me. And at times, Yahweh is doing that to Yisrael right now. But he will take the cup out of our hand. And he will afflict those who afflict us. And he has been rough with us. But in the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach, there is mercy. There is favor. There is restoration to the blessing and the promises made to Abraham, our father. Okay? But he delivered me. And I, I did I go back to school. I got my CDL Class A uh, as a better way to provide for my family. So I'm very blessed to him for that. Uh, he did it for his name's sake and for the sake of my wife and, and my children. And I'm very grateful to him for that. Elohim will deliver, but we have to wait. And sometimes waiting stinks. It doesn't feel good to wait. But if we don't wait, we don't, we don't always get the, the fat blessing. We don't always get the, the, the one that you really want. Don't mind me, I'm losing a little bit of weight and my talit katan doesn't really fit me. Uh, but the, another good problem to have. So let's be healthy in both physical mentality uh, in our minds and in our spirit. Hallelujah. Okay, here we go. From Shaul, a shliach, not from Bnei Adam, nor through Bnei Adam, but through Rebbe Melech, HaMoshiach, Yahushua, and Yahweh Elohim the Father, the one whom we say, Thou revivest the dead, even the Moshiach. Okay, so you notice how it starts that Elohim raised Moshiach from the dead, and he will raise us from the spiritual dead, where we will live in holiness. Okay, and from the Akim Ba Moshiach with me to the assembly of Galatia. And from all the Akim Ba Moshiach with me, Hen Ba Chesed, loving kindness and mercies of Yahweh to you, and Shalom Yahweh from Elohim the Father and the Rebbe Melech Yahushua HaMashiach the Master. The one having made a gift of Elohim of himself on behalf of our sins so that he might rescue us out of the Alam Haze, this present age, this present evil age, according to the will of Elohim, even the Father. I am shocked that so quickly you are being turned from the one who granted you the calling, summoning you by the Hen Bachesed, the loving kindness and mercies of Yahweh, of Moshiach. I am shocked that so quickly you are being turned from this to a different Basuras Hagula, the good news of redemption. Okay, the Basuras Hagula, the good news of redemption. So again, he says, I am shocked that so quickly you are being turned from this to a different Basuras Hagula. Not that there is another, mind you, except that there are some individuals disturbing and troubling you, desiring to twist and, per and pervert the Basuras Hagula. Okay, so there's some Yahudim going out and twisting the goodness and the kindness of the Basuras Hagula. Okay, and we're gonna we're gonna see just how this was and is being done. Okay, but even if we, Shlechim, emissaries of Rebbe Melech Hamoshiach, or a Malach from Shamaim, should pose as Magarim, preachers, and should make proclamation to you of a Basuras Hagula other than that Basuras Hagula which we preach to you. Let such a man be accursed and set under the ban of destruction and to the place of damnation. As we have previously said, and now, and now again I say, if anyone preaches a Basuras Hagula, to you other than that which you received, let this one be accursed and consigned to the destination of Gehenna. And am I now seeking the approval of B'nai Adam or the approval of Yahweh? So again, if we wanted the approval of men, we would just agree with all the Jewish literatures and everything that they're saying, but we don't. We don't want that. We want to be in the truth of Elohim the Father the mighty one of Yisrael. Okay. Or am I seeking to be a man-pleaser? If, and this is not the case, 
I were still pleasing B'nai Adam, I would not have been a servant of Moshiach. For if I make known to you, Akim by Moshiach, the Basuras Hagula, the Basuras Hagula having been preached by me is not according to man. Okay, so th this revelation that he has re received and is teaching us is not according to the sages, it's not according to man. It's, it's directly from the Ruach HaKodesh, the spirit of Elohim. Okay? He says, For neither did I receive it from B'nai Adam, nor was I taught it, but no, it was through a revelation of Moshiach Yahushua. For you heard of my, my path, my halacha, my hitkanut, my conduct, in earlier times in Yahudat, in Judaism, how I was to an extraordinary degree bringing persecution upon the assembly of Yahweh and was making havoc of it. So again, Yahudim that were believing in Moshiach, at the time, Shaul was destroying them. He was bringing persecution. He was harming them. He was finding letters. Anybody that was believing in the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach, he was, he was persecuting. Okay, and you can learn more about this in the book of Acts, where it talks about what he did to Stephanos. Um, and, and, and we see that he was reprimanding them and putting down the teachings of the Pharisees, and they killed him for it. Okay, so the, the teachings of the Pharisees is the, is the Torah to them. If you disagree with the Mishnah and Gemara and the Kabbalah and the oral tradition, we're gonna, which we're going to get more into, they believe that you're not keeping Torah. Okay, that's how valuable these traditions are to them. And I should say to you, because these videos are made for Yahudim, but it's very hard to, to, to have this discussion with Yahudim, so I'll have it kind of third person right now. Okay, verse 14. And I was working my way up, advancing and progressing in Judaism beyond many of my landsmen, be, uh, being more abundantly zealous for the traditions, the Mazarot Ha'avot of our fathers, the Kabbalah, the oral tradition, and the Torah Shabal Peh, the Hachala of my fathers. Okay, the walk of my fathers, the oral tradition teachings of Torah and Chumrah, the strict stringency of the teachings of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Okay, but when Yahweh was pleased, when it was the will of Yahweh, Yahweh being the one who separated me from my mother's womb and granted me the calling, summoning me through loving kindness and mercy, Yahweh, to reveal his son, his son in me, that I might preach him among the Goyim. Immediately then, I did not consult with flesh and blood. So again, when Elohim calls you, we don't need a man's approval. Okay, we're called to do a work and we must do it. Everyone must bear his own burden. Every man has his own work. Don't tear down another man just because your work might be different than his. Elohim is big enough to be with more than two people, friend. He's, he can do work and be with people in more than one place. Okay, verse 17. Nor did I go up to Yerushalayim to those who were Moshiach Shlakim before me. But I went away into Arabia, and again I returned to Damascus. Then after Shaloshanim, three years, I went up to Yerushalayim to get acquainted with Kepha. And I stayed with him, Kamasha Ashar Yamin, 15 days. But other of Moshiach Shlakim, uh, of his emissaries, I did not see except Yaakov, Aki, Rabbi Melech, HaMoshiach. Okay, this is a special note. This Yaakov uh, being mentioned right here was the brother of the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach, meaning that uh, Elohim sent his seed among flesh. This, he had the same mother, this, this Yaakov. So he, he did have a level of esteem in this present generation that is being uh, written from. Okay? Um, verse 20. Now the things I write to you, Hinai, look, before Yahweh, I do not speak falsely. Next I went into the regions of Syria in Kilakia, but I was not known by face by the assemblies of Moshiach in Yehuda. Only they were hearing that the one bringing persecution 
upon us is now preaching the Messianic Orthodox Jewish Emunah, which he once was pillaging. So this, I don't, I don't really, I'm not really in love with that rendition of the Messianic Orthodox Jewish Emunah. This is Emunah, period. The, the, the Moshiach has been biblical from the very beginning. It's a very basic concept that the Torah is supposed to lead us to. And if you pay attention to the writings of Moshe, it's very clear that he was giving us every indication of Moshiach. That's why he named Hoshea ben Nun, Yahushua ben Nun, for Yahweh is salvation. Okay, so this is the true Emunah, which he was once pillaging. And they were glorifying Yahweh in by means of me. So one that was once destroying the assembly of, of Yah is now building it up and doing teachings. Hallelujah. Okay, uh, chapter 2. Then after 14 years, again, I went up to Yerushalayim with Barnaba, having taken with me also Titos. Yet I went up according to a revelation, and I laid before them the Basuras Hagula that I proclaim among the Goyim. Okay, so he says, I... I he, if we pay close attention here, he says he went up by a revelation, okay? A divine revelation of Elohim. And he says, And I laid before them the Basuras Hagula, which I proclaim among the Goyim. But I did not do this privately, but I did this privately to the men of repute, lest I should run or should prove to have run in vain. But Titos, the one with me, though a Greek, was not compelled to undergo bris malah. That's the circumcision for you guys that don't know. So he says, even Titos, the one with me, a Greek, was not compelled to undergo circumcision. But because of the Achi Shecher, false brothers of, of Moshiach, the ones secretly brought in, the ones who crept in to spy out our freedom. Okay. And it's interesting because the note takes you all the way back uh, to Leviticus 25. Elohim starts it off all the time. He says, I am Yahweh, your Elohim, who brought you out of Mitzrayim, out of the house of bondage, out of the house of slavery. He says this very clearly because in our people, the people of the Yaudim, our leaders have become like Pharaoh. So we have to be freed from Yisrael, okay, in order to live unto Elohim. The teachings of the uh, of the Yahudim have become severely perverted. Okay, and we're we're going to get more into it, and I'll be able to clarify it. And, and actually, Shaul, the the Ruach Hakodesh, the Rebbe Melech Hamoshiach, is going to be the one to clarify this because the letters from Moshiach it's just only sent through a sent one. Okay. Okay, which so it says they were sent to spy out the freedom which we have in Moshiach, Yahushua, in order that they might enslave us. Okay, so these traditions, if you don't keep them, so listen, people that, that come to belief in the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach, they still identify as being a Jew because they grew up in these traditions and teachings. Now me being an, being an actual hereditary Jew, meaning it's in my blood, when I tell them that I'm a Jew, they say that I'm not Jewish because I didn't grow up Jewish. Okay, so to them, these traditions are life and death. They're everything. Without their, without their traditions, you're not a Jew. Okay? So this is the, the, the heart that he's cutting into, teaching them that these traditions are not actual righteousness. These, uh, these hukot, this humrah, these uh, this uh, gazettes, this these teachings of law, okay. Uh, verse five: To these enslavers, not for one hour did we yield in subjection, that the truth of the Basuras Hagula might continue and remain with you. Okay, so it's very important. I'm not going to go too much into this right now, and maybe I will. In order to understand what he's saying, you, you need to understand the book of Romans. I told you this before. I will not teach the book of Romans publicly. Now, if you would like to, 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 to see what I have to say, then we can learn together privately. Okay, we can, do, uh, we can just do it on a phone call and you can read and I can read and 
and we can uh, both ask questions. We can stop and talk. But I, in order to understand what the, why he's talking this way of circumcision, you need to understand the book of Romans. So you got to get your study up. If you're just watching videos and you know going to a, a church on synagogue and dressing up and playing church on Shabbat, you know that's not going to do it for you. And I'm not saying that to be rude. I'm, I'm, I'm being honest. You, you need to study and, and, and be in the scripture. Okay, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna read that one t one more time, verse five. To these enslavers, not for one hour did we yield in subjection, that the truth of the Basurus Hagula might continue and remain with you. But from the men of repute, whatever they once were matters nothing to me, uh, for there is no respect of persons with Elohim, no partiality, for to me these men of repute added nothing. But on the contrary, having seen that I had been entrusted with the Basurus Hagula, for those without the bris malah. This is the, to the lost Yaudim, the lost house of Ephraim, and to the stranger, okay? These are people that have not grown up in the traditions, but they're reading the scriptures. They're coming into the synagogue on Shabbat, okay? So you have to understand. Uh, so he says that he has made me a shliach to the ones without the bris malah, just as Kepha was for those with the bris malah, okay? So Kepha is the one to the, to the, to the Yahudim of the circumcision with the traditions of the Pharisees. These other people are maybe more unlearned, not, not studied in Torah, uh, but you know, showing up on the Shabbat and, and really kind of at a, a decent base. And some of them are maybe truly coming from the Goyim. Not everybody enters into this at the same platform, okay? And so, uh, so again, he, he's being sent to the Goyim with a message. Now, if you come in and you worship with me on a Shabbat, and I'm in this time and generation, the Pharisees that believed in the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach were saying, no, you must get circumcised right now. Now, if I were to do that to you right now today, you'd run out the door. So, excuse me. Elohim is being patient. The circumcision is holy, but it's a sign and seal of belief. Work on your belief first. Be of belief. Follow Elohim. Follow the teachings of the Torah of Moshe. Read the Torah of Moshe. Then see what happens to you. You'll see a, a bright light and things will change for you drastically. I promise you this. Okay? For the one having worked in Kepha, for the Shlikus, to those who were of the Bris Malah, also worked in me, for a Shlikus to the Goyim, so a sent one. So the same one that worked in Kepha to make him an emissary to the Yaudim of the circumcision, the same one worked in me to send me to the Goyim. In realizing the loving kindness and mercy of Yahweh had been given to me, Yaakov, Kepha, and Yaunin, the men of repute. So it's important to understand that the men, the men that he brought this revelation to, they all believe in Moshiach, okay? This is, he, it's not like he goes to the high priest Kayafa and, and, and other people. No, he, he goes to the ones believing in Moshiach, the elders, okay? And so we can see that Kepha, um, Yaakov, and Yaunin, the men of repute, the ones seeming to be pillars of the Kehillah, like they're the they're the elders, they're the foundership, uh, you know, extended to me and Barnaba, the Yad Yadamin, the right hand is a sign of brotherhood and Moshiach. Okay, so they shook hands on it. So the, uh, they acknowledged that he had been given a message to the Goyim. And, it's, and he, and Kepha and Yaakov said that we should be for those of the Goyim uh, and they shall be for those of the bris malah. So they're making a covenant. Only that we should remember the poor. Now, the more you read in this book, in Galatim and, uh, you know, Acts, uh, Messim, you'll see very clearly that the, the poor ones that they're talking about was when Shaul was taking up a contribution, he was bringing it back to the people poor and afflicted within Yerushalayim, within Yehuda. okay? So that's why he says, we have all benefited from the downfall of Yehuda. Now we shall remember him in all matters. So Yehuda is our brother. It's not for us to worry about disciplining Yehuda. Elohim will do that all by himself. 
we are calling out to Yehuda and, and teaching him the true reflection of what is being stated right now. Okay? Verse 11, but when Kepha came to... So the reason Shaul tells us about this initial transaction with Kepha is because now Kepha is coming to Antioch and he's going to do some things that are very questionable according to the good news. Now listen. But when Kepha came to Antioch, I stood against him to his face because there was found in him a thing of guilt and condemnation. For before certain ones, uh, uh, Jerusalem visitors, came from Jacob, Kepha was a matter of course sitting at a table, breaking the bread of the Sadus Moshiach, the, the supper of Moshiach, with the Goyim. But when these Jews came, Kepha drew back and was separating himself, fearing the ones of the Jerusalem party. Okay, so before the Jews of the circumcision came, the teachings of the Pharisees came, he was eating with believers in Yahushu HaMashiach, but not necessarily Orthodox Yahudim, okay? And he was fearing man rather than the teachings of Elohim, okay? So the, the Yahudim, they have many teachings about who to associate with, who was kosher to be associated with, and you have to learn more about my people and the different things that they understand, and then that would be more understandable to you, okay? Look at, and the rest of the Yahudim who were believers in Moshiach joined with Kepha in this dissembling, so that even Barnaba was carried away with their hypocrisy. But when I saw that their halakha, their hitnat hagut, their conduct, was not according to the straight way with respect to the truth of the Basura's Hagula, I said to Kepha before them all, if you being a Yehudi, having a conduct that is according to the way of the Goyim and not of the way of the Yahudim. He's saying, so like even you believe in the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach, which is not according to the, to the authorities of Judaism. So why do you force these ones to live as, as the Jews, living according to the teachings of the Pharisees? Okay? He says, how do you compel the Goyim to live as these Yahudim? We ourselves, Yahudim by birth, and not Goyish Hataim, Goyim sinners. Okay, so see, notice here that he is making a separation between the Yahudim and the nations. Okay? But who's among the nations? The scattered flock. Okay? So pay attention. It's, it, this is very complex. Even we, Yahudim by birth and not Goyim sinners, yet we have knowledge that a man cannot be justified with Elohim depending on works of gazettes, law. Now the law that's being refuted is whether we should make them circumcised right away and whether a, a Yehudi can eat at the table with one from the Goyim. So do not be confused with the classic rendition of Torah. That's a very poor word right here because it confuses people. So that the Yahudim and the Christians both think that the Torah is being done away with. There is no such thing as that. It's kind of hard to do away with something when you're teaching out of it. Pay attention. Yet we have knowledge that a man cannot be justified as, as righteous with Yahweh depending on works of law, but through emun, emunah in the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach Yahushua. And we have come to have a birachon in Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach Yahushua, that we can be justified with Elohim by emunah in Moshiach and not by supposed zoche merit of ma'asim because of taryag mitzvot. Okay, so these commandments that the Yahudim set in place for us will not justify us with Elohim, nor will they save us and, and give us salvation to deliverance. But the Torah of Yahweh, what they have put the speed bumps around to try to protect but have done massive damage, will deliver us in the Rebbe Melech HaMashiach. Okay? Now, if, if by seeking to be justified in Elohim, in Moshiach, we ourselves are also found to be hataim, sinners. 
Then in that case, is Moshiach a priest for iniquity? A minister serving sin? Kas shalom. Elohim forbid. No. If, if, we're, if we put on the perfect man of Moshiach, are we going to walk in sin? No. We're going to walk in righteousness because the spirit of Elohim will be imputed to us as a gift for believing in the Rebbe Melech Yahushua HaMashiach. Okay? For look, he says, for if what I destroyed, which he's referring to the teachings of the Pharisees, because remember, he's a Pharisee of Pharisees, if I destroy these things, uh, if what I destroy, these things I again rebuild, I display myself as a poshae, transgressor. For I, through the Torah, died in relation to gazettes, to laws, so that I might live to Yahweh. So we live with Yahweh in the Torah, not the teachings of the Yahudim, not the teachings of Tavye Singer, our Rebbe Freed. No. The teachings of Elohim through the man of Elohim, Moshe. So again, I'm going to repeat that. For I, through the Torah, died in relation to Gazettes, the laws of the Pharisees, so that I might live to Elohim. With Moshiach, I have been hanged on the tree. It is no longer Anaki, I, who lives, but Moshiach who lives in me. In a Chaim I now live, in a Basar I live by Emunah, Emunah in the son of Elohim, Moshiach, the one having love for me and having given himself over on my behalf. Okay, so this righteousness that we receive is a gift. Let no man boast today about who's more righteous or who's higher up in the rank a higher uh, uh, posture or who, who's, uh, who's better than who, who's more righteous than who. That's none of your business. The teachings of Elohim are the teachings of Elohim. Now, if one man is sinning, a man that's filled with the Spirit should correct such a one. Nowadays, good luck doing that though. But anyway, let's stay in the teaching. Okay? I do not set aside the loving kindness and mercy of Yahweh, for if the how, an inash, in parentheses, a man, is to be justified in Elohim, is found through the Gazette's Humrah, the strict, stringent teachings of the Jews, then Moshiach died for Noah. Okay, so if righteousness and deliverance comes through the teachings of the Yahudim, then why are we currently scattered across the, uh, across the four corners? Why are we not in Yerushalayim? Why is there no Hechal? Why has Moshiach not come? Because he has come and you deny it. And that's why you and your descendants have suffered. And Elohim fattened you up now. Now you got six, seven children, silver and gold. And listen, and you celebrate. You celebrate your festivals. I do not receive your festivals, says the mighty one of Israel. They are dung before my face. We have to acknowledge that we broke the first covenant. Elohim is re-covenanting the covenant with us in the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach. Okay? O oh, you senseless Galatim, who bewitched you? It was before your eyes that the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach Yahushua was publicly shown forth as having been hanged on the tree. Okay, so... Even these Pharisees today will go around and they put down Jesus Christ as if it's some hard thing to do. Listen, that's child's play. Of course, anybody can see that Jesus is idolatry. You know, people that believe in him eat pork. They do all sorts of crazy teachings. They worship on Sunday. They change the Ten Commandments. And now you who are in that branch, I'm not putting you down. I'm putting down the teachings. Come out of a false Basuras Hagula and come into the true one. Any Basuras Hagula, which is not this Basuras Hagula, is a false Basuras Hagula, a false good news. Both the Jews, the Muslims, the Christians, there's nobody that's doing it right. But this teaching is right. If you do this teaching, you will be right. Okay? This only thing I want to learn from you 
Did you receive the Ruach HaKodesh by means of Ma'asim uh, Gazettes, by works of law, or by means of hearing of Emunah? So in other words, when they were receiving the Ruach HaKodesh, and uh, they spoke in another man's language and glorified Elohim, was that by works of the Pharisees, or was that by hearing of belief of the Moshiach? By hearing of the belief of Moshiach. Okay, he says, You lack wisdom. Having begun in the Ruach HaKodesh, will you now be perfected in the flesh? My relatives are fleshly. You are, oh my relatives, house of Yehuda. This is not spirituality, these teachings that you follow. You who pollute the Shabbat. You who profane the Goyim and mistranslate the word to lead them astray because of your jealousy. You who make the Noahide covenant in addition to the covenant of Moshe. You who sin time and time again and add statute upon statute and speed bump upon speed bump and Elohim gives you a fresh teaching and you're going to refute it? Elohim can add to the Torah. He's added to the Torah many times. I'll give you one instance. When Cain sinned against his brother Abel, he was not to be touched nor harmed. After the flood, we were given the new rendition that any man that sheds a man's blood, by man his blood is shed. Elohim adds to the Torah. We sinned against the ten word in the wilderness. He said to make zitzit from the four corners so we remember the commands. Elohim adds to the Torah. He can. You can't. Okay? Did you suffer so many things in vain, if really indeed it was in vain? So then, Yahweh who is supplying to you the Ruach HaKodesh and producing miracles among you, by what means does he do it? By works of law or by hearing of Emunah? Just as Abraham our father believed Yahweh and it, his faith, was counted to him for righteousness. So when he believed Elohim, when he said that he would give him a son, he believed what he said to him and Elohim reckoned that his belief as righteousness. Know then that the children of belief these ones are the children of Abraham, our father. In the set-apart scriptures, having foreseen that Yahweh would justify the Goyim by Emunah, preached the Basuras Hagulah beforehand to Abraham. And he said, All the families and the peoples of the earth will be blessed in you, in the teachings of Elohim. For this reason, the ones of Emunah received the blessing with Abraham, our father, the believer. Okay? So when we believe, when we believe in the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach, we receive the blessing of the Torah and no longer the curse, O my people, Yehuda. We have been, we have dealt with the curse, O my people. Have we not? Look, for as many are as seeking to be justified with Yahweh, by works of law, are under the curse. Oh, my people, time upon time upon time, you stay in the teachings of the Pharisees and you get plundered and pushed out of country to country and thrown into ovens and burned them to dust to ashes. When will you learn? When will you be justified by truth instead of falsehood? Okay, look. It says, but those seeking to be under the works of law are under the curse, for it has been written, Cursed is everyone who does not uphold or abide by all the words of this Torah to do them and to carry them out. Okay, my relatives, I ask you, did we carry them out? No, because we wouldn't be where Moshe told us we would be. We wouldn't be at the four corners of the earth. We wouldn't be without the Ba'is Hamikdash and the kingdom of Dawid Hamalek. But we are with the kingdom of Dawid Hamalek. The kingdom is going to come down. We're waiting for it. Listen. Now it is clear that one person is not justified with Elohim by gazettes, by, by stringent law keeping, because the righteous, uh, the righteous by his faith will live. Okay? Even people with the biggest heart for Elohim have sinned. And, 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 we, and we can go to Dawid Hamalek. Now, the Yahudim say that he didn't sin. He himself, in, in Psalm 52, uh, Psalm 51, 52, 
assures us that he was admitting that he had sinned and he sought repentance to Elohim. Okay. But the Gazettes is not of Emunah. The, 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 the teachings of the Pharisees is not of belief. But the man who does these things will live by them. And how have you lived by them? Right now you might be getting money and you might be running NBA teams and buying uh, Major League Baseball teams. And many of you are doctors and lawyers. You got gold and silver. So you're living good right now. But what does Elohim always do to you if you won't heed? Seven times more, my son, for your sins. And if you do not heed me, then I'll do seven times more, oh, my children. Okay? Moshiach redeemed us from the curse of the Torah, having become a curse on behalf of us. Did you hear? Moshiach redeemed us from the curse of the Torah, having become a curse for us. Okay? Because it is written, Cursed of Elohim is the body or corpse being hanged on the tree. In order, that the, in order that to the Goyim, the bracha of Abraham our father, might come by Moshiach Yahushua, the promise of the Ruach HaKodesh we might receive through Amunah. Achim ba Moshiach, I speak according to human analogy. Human analogy, excuse me. Even a Brit, a covenant, having, be, having been confirmed by B'nai Adam, no man sets it aside or adds to it. Okay, so even like the Constitution of the United States, that's a covenant. You know, in all technicality, no man sets it aside nor adds to it. It's a firm document. It's, it's written, it's signed, it's penned in. Okay, when, when, you, when you make an agreement, the covenant of marriage, till death do us part. Now, that's a, that's a covenant. Um, he's going he's gonna to explain this scenario by this analogy to help our little minds understand. Okay? And he says, Now to Abraham our father were spoken the promises and to his seed. Okay? It does not say, and to seeds, as concerning many, but as concerning one. And this seed is Moshiach. Okay, this is from the beginning, even in the, uh, the, the paradise of Eden, where Elohim informed them that uh, to your seed and to her seed, and there shall be enmity, enmity between your seed and between her seed, and her seed shall uh, crush your neck and you shall bruise his heel. This is from the very beginning, folks. Those that know the Torah, there's many different signs of Moshiach in the Torah. Okay, in this I say, a covenant which was previously confirmed by Yahweh cannot be annulled so as to abolish the promise by the Matan Torah, by the giving of Torah, which was 430 years later. For if the inheritance is based on law, it is no longer based on the promise, but Yahweh has given the inheritance to Abraham by promise. Promise of what? that Abraham keeps my Torah, multiple teachings, okay? So not the teachings of the Pharisees, which have become idolatry, but the teachings of Elohim. And he passed them down from generation to generation. But we have lost our way, my people. And it's confirmed by the words of Moshe, the man of Elohim. This can get confusing. If we need to take our time, we're going to take our time. Okay, so this gazette that's being talk and talk, talked about is there's there's two reflections. There's the there's the laws of the Pharisees and there is the laws of the Torah. We'll get more into it so you can understand it. Okay, why then the giving of the Torah? The Torah was added because of Peshaim uh, transgressions until the seed Moshiach should come to whom the promises had been made. Now the Torah was administered through Malachim, messengers, by the hand of a mediator. Now the mediator is not for only one, but Elohim Hu Achad. Elohim is one friend. Okay? And that's Devarim 6.4. That's Shema Yisrael. Okay? So the Torah was given through messengers. It's holy. So I say this. 
Is the Torah then, consequently, as a result, against the promises of Yahweh? Chahas ba shalom, Elohim forbid. For if a gazette had been given that had the power to effect regeneration, then truly we would be justified with Elohim and would indeed have been based on acts of the law, works of the law, of the Torah, not the teachings of the Pharisees. Okay? But all... But the set apart scripture has co signed all things under sin that, that the promise might be given by Emunah in the Rebbelech Hamoshiach Yahushua to the believers. Okay, so anybody with two brain cells knows that we have sinned against the Torah. We have done damage and, and, and done extreme harm to the pure teachings of Elohim. But before Emunah came, we were being held in custody, being confined and guarded for the about-to-be-revealed Emunah. This is the result. The law functioned as our governess to lead us to Moshiach, that by Emunah we might be justified with Elohim. But Emunah having come, we are no longer under the governess now, what he's talking about is we are no longer held by the body of sins. He's not saying to do away with the Torah. We're no longer confined under the sin, that which, which the sin can gain occasion. This is what I told you. You need to understand the book of Romans. Some of you I know are going to refute this, and, and that's okay. I understand. I'm prepared to be patient. I will wait. I'll answer any questions, and I'm trying to be as thorough as I possibly can. Because believe me, I understand. And I, and I give all the praise to Elohim, the Almighty, the one up there that we say hallelujah. Okay? So the, uh, this is the result. The law functioned as our governess to lead us to Moshiach by the Emunah that we might be justified with Elohim. But Emunah having come, we are no longer under a governess. Okay, so through Emunah and the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach, Yahushua, you are all children of Elohim. For as many have had a immersion into Moshiach, have clothed yourselves with Moshiach. So in other words, when you come into belief in Moshiach, you're coming out of the Goyim, you're coming out of unrighteous pagan teachings, and you're coming into holiness. Now be careful because many people come into this walk and they end up leaving altogether, believing that the Messiah is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is idolatry. That is not the Messiah. The Messiah is the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach, the Besuras Hagula, the coming one, Yahushua HaMashiach. Okay? It says, in this truth, there is, there is not Yehudi nor Greek. There is not servant nor freedman. There is not male nor female. For you are all Echad in Moshiach Yahushua. And if you belong to Moshiach, then you are of the seed of Abraham our father. You are hearers according to the promise. Now I say this, for how, however much time the hearer has not attained his majority, the state of being at the fully legal age, or of his religious majority, he differs nothing from a servant though being the master of the house of the inheritance. And he is under guardians and governesses until the time previously appointed by the master of the house. So also we, when we were immature, were enslaved under the rudiments of the Alam Hase. We were enslaved by sin. When we came into the promised land, we didn't get rid of the Canaanites and the Hittites. We didn't listen to Elohim. One generation removed. And we came in and did everything the wrong way. We have never completely honored Elohim. So once again, he's going to hear our, our cry and our affliction. And he's going to come and rescue us. So I ask you, are you afflicted, my Akbar Moshiach? Or are you in peace and in joy? Let Elohim give you peace and joy in your affliction. But please acknowledge that Elohim is afflicting his people. Okay, But when the fullness of the time had come, Yahweh sent forth his son, born of Anisha, 
born under gazettes, under law, that Moshiach might bring the redemption to the ones under law, meaning we were condemned, we broke the covenant, we didn't keep our, our covenantal agreement with Elohim. And it says that we might have received the standing as adoption, okay, that we might receive the adoption as sons for the time has come. And because you are sons, Yahweh sent forth his Ruach of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, our father. So you are no longer a servant, but a son. And if a son, also a hearer through Yahweh. But formerly, when you did not have the da'as, knowledge of Yahweh, you were servants serving that which by nature is not the true Elohim. Whether Orthodox Jew, Yehudi, whether Yavani, whether you're a Greek, whether you're um, of the Goyim, of the nations, we were not serving that which is truly Elohim. But now, having known Yahweh, or rather having been known by Yahweh, how is it that you are returning to weak and beggarly rudiments of the Halam Haze, to which again you want to renew your service of servants, your, which you want to renew your service as servants. Okay, now what, what is he talking about? The teachings of the Pharisees. Here we go. You Galatim Goim observe Yamim and Harashim, months, nu and Moadim, fixed times and festivals and Shanim. To you who celebrate these festivals abroad, woe to you, for you are doing the wrong thing. Okay? For I fear for you, lest somehow perhaps I labored for you in vain. Become as I am, because I became as you are. Akim ba Moshiach, I implore you, you did me no wrong. Meaning you believe in Moshiach and I believe in Moshiach too. Whether Jew or whether Goy, we are all saved by belief. Now let's walk in righteousness, but let's please make it true righteousness. Okay? And you know that it was due to the weakness of the flesh and my sickness that I first preached the Basaras Hagula to you and your trial in my flesh you did not despise nor did you loathe. But as a Malach of Yahweh you received me as the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach Yahushua himself. Where then is your heavenly blessing? For I testify to you that if possible, having torn out your own eyes, you would have made them a gift to me. So then, have I become your enemy by telling you the truth? They, the Mohalim Goim, are zealously courting you. So these are the, these are the Pharisees that want... They believe that when somebody comes into belief, he must be he must be circumcised immediately. And even if you are circumcised, your circumcision is not valid. You must be recircumcised. Okay. And many messianic synagogues are still doing this to this very day. These teachings are very much alive and well, unfortunately. But let's get to that and and let's have Elohim and pray for Elohim to break these teachings down and do away with them. And, and, and have Moshiach return. Amen. Okay, so look. Uh, the Moyalim Gohagoim are zealously courting you, but not in a good way. Rather, they desire to cut you off and shut you out in order that you may be zealous for them. Now, it is good to be zealous in a good thing all the time, and not only during my presence with you, my children, for whom again I suffer birth pains until Moshiach is formed in you. So in other words, he's saying like, I want you to be firm in the teaching because these Yahudim come around and start talking the Kabbalah and all this stuff to you and everybody's moved like the wind. And all of a sudden, everything that Yehuda says is completely righteous. Have you not read the prophets in the Torah, friend? Come on. He says, oh, how I'm in birth pains until Moshiach is formed in you. Would that I were present with you just now and I would change my tone because I am baffled by you. Tell me, you goyim who wish to be under gazettes, do you not possess Shema hearing the Torah? For the Torah says to, for the Torah says that Abraham, her father, had two sons, one of the slave woman and one of the freed woman. But the one of the slave woman has been born according to the flesh. And the one of the free woman 
has been born through the promise. Okay, so this is another analogy that he's going to use to describe you who want to come in and do all the works of the Torah and these works of law. Watch. Because these these Jews that are telling them to do all these, do they believe in Moshiach or not believe in him? They do not believe in him. And we're, this letter is going to prove it. So these, these they're saying, no, the Moshiach has not yet come. Okay? Now these things can be taken figuratively. These are two covenants. Okay? One made at Mount Sinai, uh, bearing slavery and bondage, that is Hagar. Now, Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, which corresponds to the Yerushalayim of the present. Okay, so the Yerushalayim of the present in this time and even in this time is in slavery with her sons. The, the, the Ba'is HaMikdash is not there. Uh, the, 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 the Sanhedrin is not there. We, we are not living in the fullness and the goodness of Elohim. We sinned against the Torah and Elohim brought upon us the judgments that he promised through Moshe, the man of Elohim. Okay, so the first covenant made at Mount Sinai, we, we refuted it, we rebuttaled it, we didn't obey, and this is what happened to us. Shaul is informing us that she is in slavery with her sons. But he says, the Yerushalayim above is the daughter of freedom and the mother of us all. So this is, again, the promise made to Abraham, our father, that we will live in the promised land. We will inherit it once again, and we will never be uprooted again. And we will live in peace, and we will sit underneath the fig tree, and no man will make us afraid. Hallelujah, brother, do you believe? I believe. I, I, I want more brothers and men to start talking good things. Uh, recently, a man uh, on Facebook was speaking these words. Listen, speak that way. When I, when I hear a man speak that way, I'm encouraged because a lot of you speak uh, just either very harsh and rugged or like your wife. And many people need to start speaking like a man of Elohim. Stand up and believe in the goodness of Elohim. Okay? For it has been written, Sing and rejoice, O you barren, the one not giving birth. Break forth into song and shout for joy, the one not suffering birth pains. Because more are the children of the desolate woman than the one having the husband. So scattered Yehuda and Ephraim, they've been without the goodness of Elohim. Okay, Elohim divorced his people, according to the, the prophet Hosea. Now Yehuda is still the apple of Elohim's eye. He is still, uh, per se, the bride of Elohim. But he has not softened his heart, nor has he said the right words. So Elohim, in his anger with Yehuda, is having mercy on Ephraim. And he's calling Ephraim home. So uh, this is the blessing of the desolate woman because she was without. Okay? And that's uh, Yeshayahu 54. Okay, now pay attention. But you, Akim ba Moshiach, are children of the promise, like Yitzhak. But just as at that time, the one born according to the Basar, the flesh, was bringing persecution on the one according to the Ruach HaKodesh. So it is now also. Okay, so when, when Yitzhak was finally born, I think Yishmael was about 13 or 14 years old, and he was ridiculing and mocking the boy. Okay, so the one that was of the flesh was mocking and persecuting the one of the spirit. And so that's why it was evil in the eyes of Abraham concerning his son Yitzhak. And he sent Yishmael away with a, with, a, with a wine or a skin of water. Tell me that, he, listen, he sent, the, uh, he sent the, the sons and the children of Keturah away with gifts and many blessing. He sent Yishmael away with a skin of water. He did not bless Yishmael, but Yish, Yishmael was blessed of Elohim. Elohim blessed the boy and heard his cry. And he made him a mighty nation of 12 princes. Know the Torah, friends. Know the Torah. Okay, so now pay attention how he references fleshliness and spirituality in regards to Jews that don't believe in the Moshiach in comparison to Jews that do believe in Moshiach. Okay? It says, um, okay, so uh, let me go. But now, what does the set-apart scripture say? 
cast out the slave woman and her son for they will they for they will never for never will the son of the slave woman inherit with my son now if you recall that's what Sarah said to Abraham concerning Ishmael that he will not inherit with my son Yitzhak okay so therefore I came by Moshiach we are not children of the slave women slave woman of the first covenant made at Mount Sinai we are of the renewal of the first covenant made in the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach. Okay, I'm being as clear as day. This is holy, hallelujah. It's here, okay? But we are children of, of, and, and sons of the free woman. Uh, for in this, the Pesach Haggadah Kedush Moshiach freed us. Okay, so how did the Ten Commandments start? I am Yahweh, your Elohim, who brought you out of Mitzrayim, out of the house of bondage. Okay, the bondage that's being referred to now is the teachings of the Pharisees. If we don't keep these teachings, they say, why do you sin? Why do you not wash the hands? Uh, why do you do what's unlawful on the Shabbat? Why do you heal on the Shabbat? Why do you do this on the Shabbat? Which they're not even keeping the Shabbat. Why do you grumble about the Shabbat, you who don't know it and keep it? Okay, so in Moshi Moshiach has freed us in this stand fast and do not again be held by a yoke of slavery, okay? Look, I say to you that if you goim undergo the bris malah, Moshiach will profit you nothing, okay? So if you go ahead and get circumcised because you believe you have to get circumcised right now, you have to make sure that your heart is of belief. Circumcision is the sign and seal of belief. Without belief, your circumcision will mean nothing, Oh, you children, do you understand? Okay, and if you weren't circumcised on the eighth day and the Yahudim want you to be circumcised again because they don't count yours as valid, you do not have to do that. Elohim will count your uncircumcision as validated if you keep the Torah and follow the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach. Okay, you must keep the Torah. If there's no ifs, ands, or buts, but the teachings of the Pharisees and the Torah are two very different things. That's what's being refuted. Okay, and I testify to you again, the one of you undergoing bris malah, that such is placed under obligation to do targot mitzvot. So you're, you're obligated to keep the entire Torah, which he already gave you the present state of Yerushalayim, which she is in slavery with her sons. So if they didn't do it, how the heck are you expecting to, as one of the goyim in the nations, to, to keep the entire Torah. Stick with the mercy of Elohim, ask for forgiveness and bear fruit worthy of repentance and do it in Moshiach and be holy in Moshiach unto Elohim. Hallelujah. Okay? You who want to be justified with Elohim, boasting in Humrah, legal justification through the laws and teachings of the Yahudim, by works of gazettes, by works of law, are estranged from Moshiach. You at that point fall from the loving commitment and mercy of Yahweh. For we by the Ruach HaKodesh eagerly await by Emunah for that which, uh, for that what we have with hope, for the hope of Yahweh's righteousness. For in Rabbi Melech HaMoshiach Yahushua, neither Melah is of any force nor the lack of it, but Emunah working through love. So in other words, he's, saying, he's not saying do away with the circumcision. He's saying the most important thing is emunah and to have love and righteousness in your life. Then get circumcised as a sign and seal of your belief. But without belief, friend, please don't even waste your time. We're not going to do that to you. We are the Yahudim, boasting in Hamashiach. We are the true Yahudim. Okay? You Goyim were running well. Who hindered you? Uh, who hindered you from being persuaded by the truth? This persuasion is not of the one calling you. Here it is. A little chametz leavens all habazech, the dough. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Now, if you remember the blessed words of Moshiach, he told you to mind the leaven of the Pharisees. Okay? So he's teaching you that the Pharisees are coming in wishing to enslave you in their traditions and in their principal rudiments of the world, thinking that they're righteous and not having the right words for Elohim 
having a heart filled with repentance. Okay? I have bidachon, confidence in you, in the master, that you will think no other way, but the one troubling you will bear his judgment, whoever he may be. But if I preach to the goyim, the bris malah, Akim Bamoshiach, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the stumbling block of, of Moshiach hanging on the tree has been abolished. So this is talking about salvation and deliverance. Now, the, the, the Yahudim say that you're delivered by keeping their laws and their traditions and the things that they do. And the Moshiach has not yet come. And some of them preach uh, and teach against Jesus Christ because they don't want to talk about the truth of the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach. Now, Jesus Christ is idolatry, folks. I mean, you see the sun of stars around his head. You know, you see all the statues and the pictures of him. That's not, that's not the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach. That's a man. A man did that to you. A man made that. Elohim says, make no image in the likeness of a man or that which is in the heavens above or in the earth below or do not bow down to them nor serve them for I, Yahweh Elohim, am a jealous El, visiting the crookedness to the third and fourth generation to those who hate me, but showing love and kindness and commitment to thousands to those who love me and guard my commands. Okay? Guard the Torah, not the traditions of the Yahudim. Okay? So it says, Oh, if the ones, the, the Mohalim of Goim, troubling you would castrate themselves. Okay? So he, he now he's showing his anger for what these Yahudim are doing because they're jealous. They don't, that's why they teach against it. They don't want you to come into holiness. They're jealous. Okay? For, for Akim Bamoshiach, you were called Zaman Zerotenu. Okay? Um, and I, I did, my wife and I did that one earlier. Zerotenu. Uh, um, huh. Let me see here. Let me go on here for a minute. Let me get you that. Hang on a second. Because it looks like we might read this whole book. That's, that's really how letters are supposed to be read, to be honest with you. It can be challenging to do so. My wife and I read this whole letter today on the Shabbat, and I'm reading it again with you on the Shabbat. This is how I study scripture. I read it multiple times, over and over and over again. Not as much as I used to, but I, I'm coming around again. 12. Okay. Okay, so it's freedom. Okay, so for you, Akim by Moshiach, we're called into freedom. Only use not the freedom for a pretext for the flesh, but through love minister to one another as servants. Okay? For the entire Torah has been summed up in one word. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's kind of hard to teach people not to keep the Torah when you're teaching the Torah. Doesn't that make sense to you? Okay? So you can see here that he's saying, serve one another in love. What the Jews will say is, sit at my feet and learn because I'm better than you. That's the spirit of the Yaudim. Okay? And I know because I've seen it. I've been there. I've witnessed it. And Elohim has protected me and delivered me each time. And I've learned these things from heaven, the University of Yahushua HaMashiach. I've been blessed by Elohim, and I share it with you free of charge. Notice a man of Elohim when he speaks with you. Now, we don't want you to acknowledge us. Listen, don't acknowledge me. Acknowledge the Elohim of Yisrael. I don't need any man's praise. I'm quite fine with my wife and my children and just being the master of my home, loving my wife delicately, giving her an environment to thrive in. To teaching my children the blessed ways of the Torah. Okay? So it says, For the entire Torah has been summed up in one word, love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. But I say to you, let your halakha be by the Ruach HaKodesh, and by no means will you carry out the lust of the flesh. For the flesh desires against the Ruach, and the Ruach against the flesh. For these oppose each other, and the, uh, with the result 
that the things you wish you cannot do. Hallelujah. I'm glad I can't do the things that my flesh wished to do. And whenever I feel like I'm in a fleshly moment of temptation, I always pray a prayer that says, Elohim, I know that your spirit is more powerful than my flesh. And please overrule and overpower my flesh that I may walk before you as a holy one. In the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach we pray. Amen. Okay, so this is why you need to know the book of Romaim, but verse 18 of chapter 5, but if by the Ruach HaKodesh you are led, you are not under gazettes. So if we are truly filled with the spirit of Elohim upon believing in Yahushua HaMashiach, we are not under the law of the curse of the Torah, and we are not under the, the laws and principles of the Yahudim. We are free. Now in your freedom, should you go and sin against the Torah? Kahas ba shalom, Elohim forbid. No, friend. Listen to the words. Now, the, the desires of the flesh are manifest being these. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, witchcraft, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, selfishness and selfish ambition, dissensions, sex, so you're like, you know, like when you go to a religious community and what do we call it today? Clicks, like this clicks over there and this clicks there. You know, there's dissensions. People believe this, people believe that. And there's a good reason why I'm all alone right now. But I'm, I'm praying that by sharing these teachings with you, that Elohim will bring in true fellowship where we serve one another in love. I do not need your money. I do not want to rule over you. Right now I'm working on being the ruler of my home. And, and being a holy man. That's that's a good work for me. Okay? And in this present time and age, if you have children, you got to work hard and, and, and show them the right ways and work with our hands. So we are not a burden to the body of, of Moshiach. We work with our hands. Okay? Also, envyings, drunkenness, carousing, things like these of which I tell you beforehand as I said previously, so he's already acknowledging that he told them not to live and do these sins. Do not do not sin against the Torah of Elohim. He says, I told you this previously, that ones practicing such things will not receive of the inheritance of the kingdom of Elohim. But the fruit of the Ruach is love, simcha, joy, shalom, peace, uh, zitzvlaishk, patience, Kindness, generosity, loving kindness, faithfulness, meekness, lowliness, self-control. Would you not agree? Against these things, there is no proscription in the Torah. Okay? So the Torah is, is we walk by belief and faith. We do good things. But things, things that these, these prescriptive teachings of the Yahudim are for a lawless one. People that sin. Okay? Even the Torah is written for a lawless one. It was given on stone because of the condition of our heart. We were not following the Torah. That's why even before we received the two stones in Exodus 20 and Exodus 16, he says, how long will you disobey my commandments? You understand? He gave it to us on stone because we weren't doing it in Mitzrayim. We weren't circumcising our sons in Mitzrayim. We didn't circumcise our sons in the wilderness, Moshe was almost judged by Elohim because he didn't circumcise his sons. So how can you say that Elohim is not filled with mercy when he showed mercy when uh, Zipporah circumcised the son? Okay. If we live by the Ruach HaKodesh, we should stay in line with the straight way of the Ruach HaKodesh. Let us not become conceited, haughty persons provoking one another and envying of one another. Listen, I've been around. Uh, we're going to stop there at chapter five. No, I, I'll stop for a minute and I'm going to go. We'll, maybe we'll go back. I'm going to talk for a little bit. I've gone around to fellowships where people try to tear down another person because they want to be this great apostle or prophet or a shlikim or sent one. Listen to me. Every man has his own work and his own calling. Have your calling and be, and be blessed and built up in your work. Don't judge your work by the work of another. That's that man's work. Okay? 
I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've gone around and people are so zealous for attention, especially the attention of the women, meeting with married women privately to your own shame. Shame on you. Shame on you. Let, let, I, I, I used to joke with my wife, let, let a man meet with my wife privately. And I tell you right now, you and me feel to have a problem. That is not correct. That is not right. That let the master of the home be the master of the home. And a lot of you women, you go to these places and your husband says, hey, I'm going to do this. Better ask rabbi. Listen, that's not holiness. That's not righteousness. Now, if, if the man needs to confide with Elohim and check with him because you've given a suggestion, many times Elohim has told me, follow the words of your wife. Okay? It's not to say that, the, that, we're, that a husband should rule as an authoritarian and push his family around. No, I'm saying that he is the master of the house. Whether the woman likes it or not, that's just the truth. If you believe in the Bible, you believe in just that. Okay? Hallelujah. Okay, so don't be conceited and haughty. We should not be. Listen, I've done this too. I, I, I'm not sitting here as I'm speaking from a podium that I'm more righteous than the next man up. I've done this and Elohim humbled me. So I ain't trying to do it again. I ain't feeling to try Elohim. We are all servants and Moshiach is the head. Now, yes, is there some people higher up? Of course there is. Okay, there's, there's people that have wonderful teachings. Uh, you know, we should listen to such. There's people who are being instructed by the teacher that have wonderful teachings. The Ruach HaKodesh can move in any which way it, 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 it wants to. It doesn't just have to be through one man or a group of men. Elohim chooses whom he, whom he chooses. We're not built up and esteemed by the praise of men. Okay, so hang with me here. I know this is the longest video I've ever done, but I'm, I'm trying to show you a little bit about how I've received revelation through fastings, through prayers, through studyings. That's how it happens, okay? And Elohim just delivered me and he, and he lifted me up and he will continue to do so. And if that makes some of you folks angry, I'm, <laughs> I'm glad because I, I, I want Elohim to bless Yisrael and those that he's calling and those that are being chosen. Okay, chapter six. Akim ba Moshiach. If indeed a man is overtaken in some sin, you ones filled with the spirit Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, watching out for yourself, lest you also be put under temptation. You go to trial. So listen, if your brother is sinning a sin, I tell you that there's a sin that you should pray for and there's a sin that you should not pray for. Again, we should, we should lift each other up. We shouldn't just be yes men and, and people pleasers. If you want to have a relationship with somebody, we should both be honest with each other at all times. That's a, that's a, that's a truly... Uh, being the apple of Yahweh's eye, being holy, we, as we lift one, one another up and iron sharpen iron. Okay? So bear one another's burdens and thus you will fulfill the Torah of Moshiach. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. So if Moshiach forgave us for all our sins of breaking the covenant of Elohim, should we not have mercy and compassion on one that sins against us? Now, the answer is yes, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we'll want to be restored, excuse me, to that person in a relationship. Uh, for instance, maybe that person, you know, uh, sexually assaulted somebody or harmed somebody or uh, sins like abuse or adultery. These are extreme sins. Now, I tell you that you can forgive that person uh, and you, you don't necessarily have to be restored to a relationship. Actually, you don't have to be restored. And I got that from an old friend. Uh, that teaching did come from an old friend. Okay? But let each man prove his own works, and then his own works rather than, and in his own works rather than the works of his neighbor, and he will find kavod, glory. Okay? So, again... You know how people are always comparing people like, oh, little Johnny does this though. Who, who? And your reply is, well, who cares what he does? That's him. And that's exactly true. Listen, everybody has their calling in Elohim. Now, if you're called, please answer the calling and, and, and esteem Elohim and do your worship and walk worthily. Uh, don't tear one another down because of jealousy and envy. That's just, 
poor doctrine. And, and, and it's sad that some of these people that rule these congregations, the people there have crazy sideways beliefs, but as long as they give them praise, they don't care. Okay? For each man shall bear his own burden. And let, and let the one being taught in the sacred scriptures also share with him who is teaching. Okay, so we're all, the teacher can't say to the student, I don't need you. And the, and the student can't say to the teacher the, the same. But likewise, we each learn from each other. We're all brothers and sisters in the body of Moshiach. Stop trying to rule over one another. Then we would have fellowship and we could be joined together and we could actually be a people. Okay, but it says, but do not be led astray. Yahweh is not mocked. Uh, for whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. Okay, so if you sin, you're going to reap death. If you live in the spirit of holiness, you will reap uh, everlasting life. For the one sowing to the flesh uh, will reap destruction. But the one sowing to the Ruach HaKodesh of the Ruach HaKodesh will reap uh, Chaye Holam, uh, everlasting life. Now let us not lose uh, sight in doing good works, for in its season we will reap if we faint not. So, you know, doing good works, there's, there's never a better way to be a light unto the going to do acts of kindness, you know, for a stranger, for homeless men, uh, for, for people and children that are uh, struggling in this life, maybe the, the loss of a father or mother or a significant other. You know, there's never a better time to, to be a light to the goyim than to show kindness. Okay? Uh, and and may, may I do this too. Therefore then, as we have the opportunity, we should do good works towards all and especially towards the children of the house of belief. Okay, so especially to your brother, your Akba Moshiach in Moshiach, but also to other people, not just in our community, but also to people that are maybe not very kind to us because you never know what somebody's going through or what somebody has been through. And a lot of people are going through, you know, listen, I tell people all the time, this life is filled with heartache, pain, and grief. Okay, and some people are coming at it from a real sideways place. And sometimes if you just be kind, like, like I have an, a story. When I was in the union, I used to work with this guy. His name was Scotty. And uh, Scotty was in the union for like 30 plus years. He, he, he literally just retired shortly after working with me. But he was just a real hard up guy. Like he had got divorced from his wife. He, he, he appeared to be suffering from uh, unclean spirit. And he was just real like, rah, 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 and do this and do that and and I can remember he would see me and I had my zitzit on and, and he's like, where is God? There is no God. And I just continued to be nice to Scotty because I really had compassion for him. Elohim gave it to me for him. And uh, I said something remarkable, to, but that's not the point of the story. So I remember this one particular day, uh, Scotty made a mistake and the bosses were kind of riding them. And they wanted him to do something that was very physically demanding. And I helped him out. I did it for him. And uh, after that, we were walking back up to the shuttle bus. And Scotty said to me, he says, hey, because uh, I actually walked to my, my vehicle. He says, hey, you know, anytime you need a ride to your vehicle, let me know. And I thought that was nice of him, you know. So, and after that, we were friends, you know. So it's, you never know who you can make an impression on if you just show kindness, no matter what, okay? And so we, we learn. So the one that reaps to the spirit will, 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 will reap everlasting life. The one that sows the sin will to the flesh will reap condemnation. Um, see what big letters I wrote to you with my own hand? As many as crave to make good preeners in the flesh, so make a good show out of you in the flesh, these compel you to undergo bris malah, that the mohalim of goyim do so only to avoid suffering the persecution for the tree of Moshiach, for the stake of Moshiach. So again, this is a, this, this scripture is referring to deliverance of salvation. Now they're saying that you're, 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 you're healed and saved by the Torah and by keeping our laws and traditions. 
when in actuality that goes against the, Moshe's uh, Moshe's writings of scriptures about reconciliation and, and, and forgiveness of sin. Okay, so right now, if you sin, there remains no sin offering for you. The sin offering is the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach. We'll get more into that another time. Okay, so it says, um, For not even those of the party of the Bris Malah are Shomer mitzvot themselves. So he's saying these ones that want you to be circumcised, they don't even guard the Torah. They don't. They only guard their traditions and their teachers and their their the rabbiim that they love so much and, and Rashi and the Rambam and Yaunit and Renders and Mamanades are listen, please what I say to this is leave me be. You know, follow Elohim, not a man. That's his interpretation. Study Torah and have a contextual conversation of Elohim's word. Okay? He says, that, so they're boasting in you. They don't even guard the Torah, but they want you, Goyim, to undergo the bris malah for the purpose of boasting in your flesh. But may it not be for me to boast except in the tree of Hamoshiach, Yahushua the master, through whom the Alam Jose has been crucified or put on a tree to me, and I have become uh, dead on a tree to the Alam Jose. So in other words, the world is dead to me and I am dead to the world. I don't care about who's the best basketball player and who's going to win the NBA championship. What I care about is righteousness, holiness, and pleasing my Elohim. And by doing this video tonight, I thoroughly and prayerfully hope that I have pleased him. Okay? For neither bris malah is anything nor the lacking of it, uh, but a, a renewed creation. And as many as walked according to this rule of the straight way, uh, these teachings of the Torah, shalom of Yahweh and the mercy of Yahweh be upon them and upon the Yisrael of Yahweh. Okay? So again, the discussion is whether people should get circumcised as soon as they come through the door and if you do it in unbelief or, or, or with the Jews not believing in Moshiach, your circumcision is completely null and void. It's worthless. You only get circumcised as a sign and seal of belief. And both of my two younger sons are circumcised on the eighth day. We believe in it. We love it. It's holy. It's the sign and the seal for belief forevermore. Amen. So Shaul says, For the rest, let no one give me any more troubles, for I bear in my flesh the Haburot, the wounds, the stripes of Yahushua HaMoshiach, Akim HaMoshiach, the loving kindness and mercy of Yahweh, the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach, Yahushua, the Master be with your Neshama. Amen. Okay? We just read a whole book together, giving you insight into the book of Galatim, what law is truly being put down. Okay? So the law that's truly being put down is the law and the teachings of the Pharisees. Now I've said that hundreds of times in this teaching i have to be redundant to really land the plane and show you that this is the true reflection of the basuras hagula teachings for the yahudim where everybody benefits so i do say love and peace from my house to your house and shalom from elohim the father forevermore to you and your house and please if you if you wish to have fellowship you can contact me on uh, my YouTube channel and also on the Facebook page of Set Apart Eliyahu. Shabbat Shalom and peace to you and your house. Amen.